Hi guys, it's Heather, the Butterfly Effect plant-based weight loss. And I'm doing my weigh-in Wednesday on Thursday. Yesterday, I was just exhausted, completely tired, and I decided to do it today. And I'm really glad that I did because I feel like this is a much better video and that I have more to share with you today than I would have yesterday. And so first I wanna get the weight out of the way. And um, I would really like to get the weight all the way out of the way, right? Um, if you don't know me, I started out 436 pounds. Uh, last week I was 186. And this week I am, no, excuse me, last week I was 183. And this week I am 186. And that is because I had a three pound um, increase in my weight this week. Um, but so as you can, you can hear from my history, I've taken off a lot of weight. I actually got down to my goal weight at one point. My goal weight was 136 and I got there October, 2017. But then I struggled like a lot of people do and I put back on some weight. I put on like 90 pounds. And so this is my, you know, do over. <laughs> and so now I'm down to um, 186. So I'm definitely headed in the right direction. I'm about, you know, uh, 40, 40 pounds. Is that really true? Like, no, 50 pounds. I'm 50 pounds away from my goal now, which is great. That means I've taken off 250 pounds, which is nothing to sneeze at, right? But um, I did have a gain this last week. And here's the thing about the gain that I had last week. I didn't do anything to gain last week. What I mean by that is I um, stayed abstinent last week and I um, didn't have any animal products. I didn't have any sugar, any oil, any flour, any alcohol. And I exercised. I did all the normal things. And so sometimes, um, that's one of the things I wanna talk about is sometimes the, you know, if your weight fluctuates, which weight will do, right? Because when you're weighing yourself, all you're really measuring is the pull of the Earth's gravity on your mass. That's all your weight really tells you, right? So um, it's a good thing to keep in mind. And so when you're weighing yourself, you're weighing all of yourself. You're weighing your fat, but you're also weighing your lean muscle, your skeleton, your water, the contents of your digestive tract, you know, anything else that is going on in your body. And so weight is um, a tool to help you evaluate progress, but it is not a perfect tool and it's definitely not the definitive tool. And so it's one thing that I wanna you know, emphasize is if the weight fluctuates, what you need to do is you need to take a very honest look at your behaviors and your habits. Like, did I do anything that would make the weight go up? Um, and if you did not do anything that would make the weight go up, you know, if you search your heart and you're really honest with yourself and it's not because of anything that you did, for instance, for me to have put on three pounds of actual fat, I would have had to take in an, ac an extra like 10,000 calories, probably would have remembered that, right? That probably would have been an event that I would remember doing. So. Um, I had a clean conscience, so I wasn't that worried about um, putting on the weight. That said, it got to me, right? It did, it got to me. And um, so that was yesterday morning, right? And then yesterday night, I did have a break in my abstinence. And by that, I mean I had oil and I had flour. No, excuse me, no, well, maybe I did have flour. It probably did, if I think about it, because what I had was, I had a fake meat product. I ate something that had a fake meat product in it, and I knew that it had that meat analog in it, because I'm the one who made the dish. 
Now, at the time that I made it, I didn't make it for myself. I had a guest over and this guest is not vegan, and but they're very open-minded and they are willing to try vegan food. And so trying to make sure that they liked the food, I put, and knowing that they, you know, were used to a lot of meat, I put um, a fake meat product in my shepherd's pie because I had made the shepherd's pie for this person in the past and they really liked it. And so wanting to be a good hostess, I made it again and I put that in there and I just thought I won't have it. Um, you know, typically shepherd's pie, the way I make it is totally compliant. I just put in peas and carrots and potatoes and um, lentils and uh, it's topped with mashed potatoes and it's the way I usually make it is totally fine. But this time I did put in a fake meat product and then this time I ended up eating some, okay? And so whenever I break my abstinence, um, haven't broken it in a really long time and um, by the grace of God, one day at a time, hadn't broken it in a really long time. But the way that I react to that is I don't beat myself up. I don't, um, I don't know how to explain it. Like I react with self-compassion now, like, oh, that happened. Or, you know, like more like a mindful, mindfulness of just observing, oh, that happened, you know, and then being more of a scientist, like, why did that happen? How can I prevent that from happening in the future? So um, turning a bad day into good data, right? Bad day, good data. And so um, that's what I wanna do. And I, so I feel like the two steps that I like to do is like report it because I wanna be authentically honest with myself and with everybody else because you guys are my accountability partners. That's why I started this channel is so that I would have accountability partners and um, so I wanna be authentically honest with everybody and also, so that's, that's the report side. Um, then there's the resume side, like keep on going as though it never happened. So this morning I had greens for breakfast, just like I do every single day. And I'm just gonna ignore it and pretend like it didn't happen and carry on. And then the other side is um, see, you know, finally like, see what you can learn from it, okay? So I had four, no, excuse me, five really good learnings that I wanted to share with you. And the first thing that I learned, I put, I put on here, what I learned from my break in abstinence. Um, so the first thing that I learned is get more sleep. I started back at my grad school class on Monday night and it was super fun and I really liked it, but I don't get home till like 10 o'clock at night because it's after work. And when I get home um, that late, a couple things happen. I don't get enough sleep because I'm a person who wakes up really early in the morning. And we know, we know that not getting enough sleep is terrible for uh, your brain as far as being able to withstand temptation. They have done studies with um, sleep deprived rats eat 25% more than non sleep deprived rats and well rested rats. And so um, that is one of the things that I identified because I hadn't gotten enough sleep on Monday night. I was too excited about my class. I didn't even get home till 10. I couldn't even fall asleep till like 11. I wake up at like 4.30 in the morning and so that was thing number one. And then yes, like Tuesday night, I did my volunteer shift at the homeless shelter where I, um, I it's a great, it's a great gig. I get to, um, I do childcare for like the under threes while their parents go to a class at the homeless shelter. And so I love it. I had a great time, but again, I got home late. And so that, also influenced it so by yesterday my resistance was really low i was great all day long and then night happened and then that extra tempting thing happened and that's all it took and i broke my abstinence so 
Um, get more sleep is my first learning from this whole situation. Number two is do not let weight fluctuations mess with you. Um, and I already explained that like, I shouldn't have let it upset me. It did upset me to some extent. Like I wanna see the scale go down every single week. Who doesn't? Like if you're being 100% on track and the scale doesn't go down, it ticks you off. It made me mad. So um, it can make you feel like maybe I don't even need to be putting in all this effort because it's not gonna work anyway. And I didn't feel like that, but um, on a certain level, it did bother me. And so I've decided that I'm definitely not going to let that bother me <laughs> in the future. I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to really watch my attitude, right? I can't, you can't dictate your emotions, but you can use logic to help influence them, right? Use your Spock brain to help calm your, your passionate brain. Um, and I'm also going to be more vigilant um, during PMS week, which <coughs> has traditionally been a problem for me. And um, always, like since I had PMS week, right? And guess what? This is PMS week, which also probably accounts for the three pounds. Um, and it's a very typical pattern for me, but also craving salt and eating off plan in the past, haven't done it in a long time, like I said, um, has always been a pattern for me during PMS week. So I need to be more vigilant. Basically, I need to put, it's like, like when I knew Christmas was coming, I had to put more supports in place so that I wouldn't have temptation that I wasn't prepared for or that I couldn't withstand during the holidays. And I did that, I put all kinds of support in place. And so I just need to know that PMS week is here and um, the scale might mess with you. Don't let that influence you. Um, you're going to be tempted to eat off plan. You need to be more careful. Um, you need to stay far away from temptation and don't test your resolve during that time because the thing about willpower is it's a fluctuating commodity, right? It's never something that you get and then you just have from then on. So. Um, that was another learning for me, be more vigilant during PMS week. Um, the next learning was nix the night eating because one thing I did do on Monday night and to some extent on Tuesday night is even though I got home late, way later than I ever usually get home, I still wanted a little something when I got home. You know, like you come through the door, it's a big trigger for me to eat something and so I didn't eat off plan but I did eat when I did not have any business eating at like 10 o'clock at night or even at you know 8 30 at night or 9 o'clock at night when I came home from my volunteer shift and so um, I'm going back to my rule uh, nix the night eating I'm not eating after six I'm not eating after six and I'm even gonna put like a little note to myself on the fridge like, is it after six? Because if it is, you need to get out of the kitchen. <laughs> okay, so nixing the night eating was another thing that I um, felt like I learned from this break in abstinence because guess when it happened? At night, and we know that our willpower is lowest at night like you can do great all day and then mess up at night it's a really common pattern um i know this I, it's it's too bad like knowing stuff doesn't keep you from doing it right so anyway um that is the next lesson and then the final lesson and i know this again uh do not make things for others that you cannot resist okay so i could have I had a lot of choices. I could have made a dish that I could eat some of, right? Like that would have been compliant that my guest would have enjoyed. I could have made the shepherd's pie and left out the meat analog, the fake meat, because that's not good for anyone. Um, I could have, there's a lot of things I could have done. I could have just made something not even complain at all for my guest and then I wouldn't have been tempted to eat it. Like if it wasn't vegan or something, I don't mean, I can't make something vegan. That's not vegan anymore, but um, I don't know. I had other choices and I did not choose to exercise those choices and it ended up biting me in the tuchus. So 
I'm just saying, you know, that is something that I've learned. Don't make something for others that you can't resist. I know this, right? So anyway, I lesson learned. I'm going to be I'm going to keep that in mind when I have guests over because I, I don't entertain that frequently, so it shouldn't be that hard to remember. Okay, the last thing that I wanted to say is, um, so these are all the things that I've learned. I know that I'm going to be um, doing great today. Um, I really need to do great today to get like some credibility back under my belt and make myself feel better. But I hope that um, some of this can help you if you ever, um, I hope at least to give you a framework of if you do go off your plan for some reason, try to do the same thing. Like forgive yourself, be compassionate with yourself, try to detach from the emotions of it. Like don't just be like, oh, that happened, you know. Um, as though it were happening to someone else, something, someone that you love very much and that um, you would have compassion toward. And uh, realize it's not a character flaw. It just means, it's, it's just like when you're driving in your car and you take a wrong turn, the GPS doesn't say, you stupid head, you made completely a wrong turn. You, now you're just gonna have to sit there. You can never get where you're going now. You've made such a terrible error. So, in, you know, it doesn't, it just tells you get, you know, get right back on the right path at your next opportunity. Like, so this is my next opportunity. I'm getting right back on the right path. And um, try to turn a bad day into good data so that you can learn from it and not repeat mistakes. And sometimes we have to remind ourselves several times of things we already know but that is just gonna reinforce the learning and every time that you do that, it's going to increase the chances that you'll do better the next time. So I love you guys, I hope you have a great week and I will talk to you soon.